Hi everyone, Joe Bloom here with another digital podcast. Hope you're enjoying the video so far. Um, I really enjoy sketching animals. I think there's just as much life in them as anything you can find. I really, really enjoy their personality and the anatomy is very familiar because, you know, we basically all have the limbs, we all have the uh, the muscles, we all have the snout, the mouth, the eyes. So this is just, it's like doing caricature in a different realm. What I start out sketching, I, I'm looking for shapes that are either appealing to me about this, about this, uh, this animal that I'm drawing, and then I just sort of exaggerate them and, uh, and try to have as much fun with the shape and try to make it just as appealing as I possibly can. That's something Steve Silver talks about a lot, is just general appeal to your pieces. And it's a quality that I, I don't think anyone can really teach. You can study, you can, um, you can uh, try to learn what makes something appealing, but it's something that I think you have to go through yourself and try to figure out. Now, I'm doing something different this time where I'm not showing the reference that I'm using for this. I'm not making this up. I'm going to I'm changing it quite a bit, but I'm not making this image up. I am, however, uh hiding the image. Now, I have a reason for this. There's a lot of a lot of factors with artists that that really make up what they do. And one of the things I was thinking about today is a lot of it has to do and I talked about it in another in another podcast. A lot of it has to do with their choices. Each artist in each piece that they make, they they have a number of choices, whether it's the color palette or the reference image. There's a lot of different things that are involved in coming out with the final product that they have. And I've seen some amazing paintings or drawings or caricatures where then I see the reference after the fact, and to be totally honest, I'm disappointed, or it's not as exciting now. The mystique is gone. So I liked their choice, though. It's something that I don't think is lost in the piece, it's not a worse piece. It's not. It's not any worse because I've seen the reference. But it's just the the mystic and the excitement. It's like Christmas, you know, Christmas morning. You wake up when you're a kid and you're really excited about about um getting your presents and there being a Santa Claus. If you've if you ever had that growing up. But then once you learn that there is no Santa, it's like oh, this Christmas is the same. There's presents, same ritual, but it's just not as exciting. You know, you don't have that little childish excitement and I enjoy that so I don't want to lose that so I'm gonna try to treat you to that by not showing you what I'm drawing until you see it finished I will tell you I'm drawing an animal that much is true um, I'm hoping maybe you'll figure it out pretty quick what I'm doing but I don't know either way I think it's exciting maybe you'll uh, maybe you'll enjoy trying to figure out what it is and taking time on that so I'm just blocking in shapes at this point sketching it all out trying to figure out what uh where I'm going with it, where the lights and the shadows are, what I want to exaggerate based on uh, the particulars of this creature. But I'm going to have fun also. So I, uh, I've been drawing characters for a long time, but I got the chance to do some character design for animation last year. And I think that's the direction I want to go with my artwork some more. I'm really enjoying, I enjoyed creating something based on ideas, based on direction, and creating a whole new look of something uh, with with a style that was directed, maybe, um, maybe, tr maybe just taking some criticism based on marketing. I sort of find the place, you know, I mean, everyone loves art for art's sake, and everyone loves not compromising their, uh, their integrity and their vision, but... I learned that there's a time and a place for that, and that uh, you know I talk a lot about rejects and getting caricatures done, and um, and uh, how people don't understand what good caricature is and how that changes everything. But there's there's a time and a place for everything, and I understand when someone needs a cute character in an animation or in a commercial, and I understand when someone doesn't want an exaggerated portrait of themselves they want something that's a little more toned down but they want the quality of your work they just don't necessarily want that exaggeration so I'm sketching this out on a different layer in Photoshop I'm gonna move it over here because I want a different composition and I'm what I did is I cropped out all of the tools all of the uh, layer palettes I am working with them still I'm working with a lot of different elements but I decided to leave that out 
for the sake of uh, aesthetic. I want you to just see the finished product. I want you to just see this painting. Because like I said, it's, it's so much more exciting when you see something come to life and you don't really know what it's going to be. I really enjoy that, and I want you to enjoy that too. So um, hopefully you can tell what this is at this point. If you can't, I'm not going to spoil it for you. I really want to start talking about the, the subject and the choice of what I'm doing here, but I don't want to ruin it. I want you to maybe figure it out on your own pace. It's like Sixth Sense, that movie, the M. Night Shyamalan movie with um, that cute little uh, annoying boy. <laughs> he, uh, you know, there's people that I heard spouting out the secret to that movie, the whole, like, the twist. I heard people yelling it out, you know, 15 minutes into the movie. But it took me a while to figure it out, and I'm glad I didn't quite hear them. Because I enjoyed figuring it out, and I didn't want anyone to take that away from me. It's like a spoiler. So just in case anyone's not with it yet, I'm not going to tell you what this is. Though I am going to keep painting. I don't want to spend too much time on this. What I'm doing is I'm using this as an exercise today. I, I uh, had, some, had some lunch, and I got a lot of work done this morning, and now I just decided I'm going to uh, work on another sketch for today. I've been trying to do at least one of these a day. Just started, but I want to make it a habit, hopefully, so everyone can enjoy that. Um, I'm going to block in some tones here. This helps me figure out where my lights and my darks are and where I want to keep pushing and pulling if I do want to try to change the composition at all or the anatomy or the, you know, just the, the overall look of the piece. Now I'm using a brush here that I didn't expect to use. I think I accidentally picked the wrong one. I'm going to change it, though I was kind of enjoying that little dark light transition. That was kind of interesting. Sometimes it works like a brush tip when you don't intend for it to. And uh, that can be useful, but I didn't want that at the moment. So I, uh, I love these animals. And these are something I've always had a, a love for. and I don't think it'll ever change. So there we go. Now I've got some semblance of a composition. I've got figured out what I want to do with it. I'm going to go in and tighten this up a little bit. So what I'll do is I'll just uh, make another layer and fill that in with sort of the tone that I want to work in. I'm just working monochromatic and I'm going to drop the opacity down so you can see through and then I'm going to start pushing and pulling lights and darks based on that. It's uh, not what I always do, but it's something that my friend taught me, and or I saw one of my friends do in his own little digital painting, and I, I really enjoyed seeing that come to life. Hopefully this will come together fairly quickly. Just practicing my chops. Like I said, um, it's this is something I just want to get to do every day get familiar with with the process of sketching with pushing and pulling shapes I want to be able to uh, to pitch like an all-star each day I want to be warmed up you know what I mean because there's nothing worse than sitting down with a pencil and you're ready to draw especially if you have an assignment or or a client that wants you to draw something and you just can't do it that is the worst feeling in the world and it's so frustrating as an artist when you can just sit down and you want to create something, whether it's a painting, a drawing, a sculpture, anything, and you just aren't warmed up or aren't prepared and you don't have the time to, then you just let yourself down. It just feels like you've really ruined your day. There have been so many times when I'll be doing an illustration for a magazine or a newspaper and uh, I, just, I just can't can't warm up. I can't do it right away I have to sit there and work on it and it sometimes it becomes obvious in pieces where I started when I was cold just not warmed up I guess you could say and then um, and then I got warmed up halfway through the piece and half the piece looks better than the other half that's something you don't want to do